Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm No02, and thank you for watching this video. This is the Ogerian Skull Breaker for Warhammer 40k Dark Tides. Uh, we're going to do a little character breakdown here. You guys get a little teaser of what's to come in the game's release. Keep in mind, this is all beta content, right? So, numbers, abilities, everything's subject to change. And also, I assume there's things that we haven't, uh, haven't seen yet. So, be sure to check the timestamps. I'll be going over the base uh, kit for the Ogarian. I'll be going through the columns of all the skills and abilities that they got going on. And then we'll sort of talk about what their role is, how they sort of fit into a team composition, how they sort of, interestingly enough, are the inverse of the uh, Psyker build, essentially. What their tools and abilities sort of end up relating to as far as their uh, use inside the match and things like that, right? So, start off with the Blitz. This is their grenade slot. Everyone's got a grenade slot. It's called the Blitz. You got one grenade, throwing the entire box of grenades because they are not smart enough to pull the pins out on my guess. With great strength and enthusiasm, single target high damage attack. And when they say single target high damage attack, it is true. It's insane. This is a, this is a brain burst worth of damage. This grenade box will one shot the mutants and deal huge damage to bosses and things like that, as well as like the the uh, what is it the uh, the plague or orgarians and things like that. Huge, huge chunks of damage. In fact, uh, this is going to be a really crucial part of how we talk about their kit later on. Next, their aura is 10% uh, heavy melee attack damage. Uh, ferocious charge. I love the tooltip. It's just you charge forward at good speeds, good distance, knocking everything down. Notably compared to the uh, like chastise the unfaithful or whatever that the zealot has. Uh, this actively you can see is like literally pushing things like like the red seas to the side of the ogarian when he does this charge providing a lot of potential crowd control next we have plus 20 percent toughness damage reduction in the same for health making him inherently a natural tank he also has the most health he's got 300 health comparatively to everyone else uh, he's got plus 25% melee stagger, also a really important part of his kit and how he relates to the Psyker when we get there. And then being damaged while reviving or assisting allies no longer interrupts you. Almost playing into this idea that he's sort of expected to be the last person alive to some extent and potentially has sort of figure it out, clutch it, keep abilities, or he can save teammates during, during sketchy fight scenes and things like that. So now his skills everyone's first uh trio of skills here all have to relate to toughness or like making it better or regenerating it so here he has plus 100 toughness replenishment allies and coherency so you sort of like tack this on to his typical aura now you sort of double the rate at which people regenerate their toughness replenish 15 toughness on single enemy heavy melee attack heavy melee attack is the important thing here where you have to like do the lift up and smash and do the heavy attack in order to, for this to trigger. It doesn't trigger on the light or the faster strikes. Replenish 15 toughness on hitting multiple enemies with a heavy melee attack. Again, so, so some melee attacks have the cleave and so I, that would be ideal for this. Where again, you're doing a heavy, heavy melee attack and you hit, well, more than one person. You get the 15%. Uh, from what I've seen and what I've experienced, this is... This is a little bit easier to, to to hit than you might think. Um, but ironically enough, it's like uh, it one, they're both the same, but one says single and one says multiple, right? And so the big difference here that you're going to encounter is that during a horde event, during a horde event, I guess what I should have said was that this is easier to hit. This is... This is easier to hit than you might think as far as getting the multiple hits because you don't necessarily always need a cleave ability to do this. Sometimes like you can just like do the forward stabby thing with your with your club or whatever and sometimes it'll hit two people. You can sort of finagle it to do so. Cuz cuz what I want to say here is the clear and obvious contrast here is that one triggers on single enemy hit. So if you hit two people at the same time, this does not trigger you get a single person while using this one, it doesn't trigger. The reason why this smash them and good 
it's almost inherently better than best form of defense. It's simply because if you get into a boss fight, this will keep triggering. So even during a horde event, when there is a crap ton of enemies all around you, you can still sort of finagle your way and base off of your weapon still pretty easily and pretty comfortably hit one target at a time. So during those events, so either, so either during a horde event or during a boss fight, smash them good is easy to and reliably, you're, it's pretty easy to trigger regardless of the circumstances where smash them or, or his best form of defense will not, will not work, right? Will not work during the boss fight, right? And now that some of the boss fights have mobs that spawn in and things like that. So that can be quite good as far as having this potentially. But I think overall, for the most part, if you're really good about your movement and swiping large groups of enemies, you actually don't end up taking that much damage anyways. And if you do end up taking that damage, there is ways to sort of finagle this into your swings while still providing adequate crowd control. Let's smash them good. With that being said, if you don't want to think about it and just want to get into there and start swinging madly at all the people, then best form of defense sort of makes sense, right? But that's, I just wanted to talk about that extensively because they're literally the same thing. It's just one you can hit, you can only hit one target and the other one you have to hit multiple. Just keep in mind, like, the difference between, like, being in a boss fight versus being in a horde event and things like that. Uh, heavyweight. Plus 50% melee damage versus bulwarks, crushers. Oh, God. How embarrassing. Quickly. Quickly. I've been sort of trying to do this video. And I, had, I sort of had to stop and go up and down because my baby keeps waking up and requiring attention and then going back down. We've been in the lobby for quite some time. Apologies. Apologies. Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I'm your favorite in the dark floating head gamer dad. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So, plus 50 damage versus all of these scary big guys, the heavyweights, right? The heavyweights. But also 50% damage reduction from them as well. Very cool, very clear and obvious sort of like tank, single target damage. Hitting a carapace armored enemy with your grenade box causes it to open releasing grenades around the target. This is kind of interesting. Uh, I haven't seen anyone do this before. My assumption, though, is that uh, for the most part, though, the grenade box is going to outright kill just about everything that it hits, except for, like, big, big bad bosses. And I don't know what necessarily, like, there's no tool tips. There's no, like, what, this is carapace armor, and these enemies have flak jacket armor and things like that. So I don't know if, how many of the bosses have carapace armor. But for the most part, this only ends up working in the circumstance, the very specific circumstance of... Big bad scary thing spawns in with a horde of guys around him, and they're both charging at the same time. This would then make sense, but I don't, I don't know what the fuse time on these grenades are. This one feels like very circumstantial to me. Blood and thunder plus one bleed stack on heavy melee hit. And keep in mind, I would want to preface this um, to some extent. You know, I I've played a little bit. I've played at least an hour with all the characters, but I do want to say like. You know, these are first impressions, first impressions, first concepts, first ideas. And again, it's the beta, so this all might change in the future. Plus one bleed stack on heavy melee hit. I don't know, I don't know how good bleed is, but assumably this is really good for single target fights. And I, I would also think that if bosses can be debuffed with bleed, then this to me seems like the boss, the boss killer ability. Whereas heavyweight seems like a... Uh, the middle ground fights, the, the the still big scary fights, right? The plague or uh uh or or uh, bleh. ogurin, og I want to say or or <laughs> the of <laughs> turning into a seal, I think or <laughs> ogirian. <laughs> I've been talking a lot tonight. Ogirian, right? The ogirian, the heavyweight is like all of the mini bosses, essentially, right? I don't know what the game dignifies them as i assume they're the elites but like i don't know there's the specials and they're elites and then there's bosses I, eh, there's no ui there's no tool tips for the stuff i don't quite know what what everyone is classified as but this is sort of like everything in between like there's the mob the trash mob enemies then there's these guys the heavyweights essentially 
And then we'd probably want Blood and Thunder for like the big bad bosses because uh, they're going to take multiple smacks and you can get multiple stacks of bleed. Next is Coherency plus Radius. There's actually not a whole lot of Coherency synergy in his kit. There's Bullfighter here, which works with Coherency, and then there's That's What a Friends are for, but Towering Presence and Friends are in the same row, so you can't have both of them. I feel like you would never pick this unless you chose Lynchpin, essentially, right? Just like a little microcosm of like Coherency synergy here. And when you activate Bull Rush allies in your Coherency, gain 25% movement speed for the four seconds. But again, all the Coherency stuff is all in the same row, so it's like none of it synergizes with each other. 50% of the damage taken by the closest ally in Coherency is transferred to you. This talent has no effect while you are below 25% health. This would be a very scary perk to run if you're playing with three random teammates. If you're in quick play, if you're in quick play, this is a scary thing to choose. I do want to preface something here that I just thought of. I'm assuming that when you level up your character, you're choosing one skill per row. That's my assumption. I haven't literally, when I've watched other streamers, I haven't seen anyone high enough level to have the second row unlocked. But I'm assuming you choose one thing per row. Now, if that's not the case, and you can sort of mix and match two in a single row and things like that, then... This coherency radius thing sort of makes sense with what can potentially be achieved with it. But moving on. Bullfighter. Plus 10% bullfighter rush cooldown when you are an ally and coherency kills an enemy elite. Minus 25% damage taken for each ally currently knocked down or incapacitated. And this got... This is where like you get like the solo clutch feels, right? 70... Imagine all three of your teammates being down. 75% damage reduction. On top of like having an additional maybe 50% from these particular enemies, right? You're restoring toughness on each hit, doing other stuff. And then you can't be knocked back or knocked off of reviving somebody. Like clearly like this is like, if you like to save the day and be the hero, there's some potential here for that being the Ogirian Skullbreaker. And then Die Hard 100% toughness replenishment while below 25%. I'm not entirely sure exactly how the toughness works. I am assuming like it's shields, right? When you don't take damage for a couple of seconds, then you start regenerating. But 100% here, maybe an extra 100% over here. A lot of potential for a shield regeneration build as well. When an enemy damages you, gain plus 20% against enemies at the same time. I'm assuming that because this card is called Payback Time, when you suffer the damage, you gain plus 20% damage in return against them. It's, it's not stated here. Just sort of a little typo, essentially, right? Fully charged heavy attacks have unlimited cleave. This is a mechanics thing that I don't quite understand. Obviously, different weapons have different swing animations, and one of them is cleave. You can cleave enemies, and I know some of the weapons even say, like, cleave, cleave targets, and, like, cleave damage, and, like, first target hit, and things like that. So my assumption for the mechanic of cleave is that you do reduce damage based on the number of people that you hit, and I'm assuming that first target takes the most damage, second target takes a little bit less, and then the third a little bit less. But when it says unlimited cleave, I don't know if it means, like, all targets take maximum damage, the initial damage that everyone, else, like, damage is as high as it can possibly be for all the targets. I don't know if it's number of targets, right? Because it's, like, the, the cleave multiply, like, the cleave target stat if it means, like, you have a, a stat of five for cleave targets and you hit six people, the sixth person doesn't take any damage or significantly reduce damage. There's there's some mechanics here that I don't fully grasp. I don't know exactly how to evaluate knife through butter, but, but it would clearly and obviously increase your, increase your uh, crowd control capabilities here. Then plus 10% damage uh, on your next melee hit, on melee hit with each enemy hit with the initial attack uh, so basically you swing you hit five people with it and then you swing again and that next swing does plus 50 percent damage and sort of part of my confusion with like knife through butter is like this is clearly for crowd control for raging bull you're in a crowd control situation we got multiple targets you hit multiple targets with your first swing uh, and there's two scenarios you either just swing again and hit multiple targets again and I assume with the plus 50% damage, you're going to just 
wreck them, right? You're just gonna you're just gonna heck them up, right? So it's like it's like Raging Bull in a sense does the same thing as knife through butter, but leaves us the option of swinging, hitting a group of enemies, and then we can charge to a big scary guy and then blam him for an extra 50%. So I feel like Raging Bull does the same thing as Cleave, potentially, but leaves the option of also spinning that damage to deal with single targets, where Cleave, the Cleave thing is only going to be viable for multiple, for like, for mob events, right? Those some mechanics I just don't quite understand. Plus, bleed stacks on enemies hit by Bull Rush. Increase the dis distance you travel with Bull Rush by 100 meters and cannot be blocked by enemies except monstrosities. I didn't really... Mit Mitres? Mitres. Um, this one I don't... I feel like you already go pretty far. I'm assuming that a bonus 100 meters is like... I'm assuming it's like double the range, maybe. But, um... Um, it feels like a lot. And this might be like, a, oh crap, we're scared, we're running around, we're trying to buy time, get distance. Things like Die Hard or like Lynchpin come in play here. This, this sort of looks like a buy time or like someone's about to bleed out. You can get there really fast and stuff like that. But I feel like Bull Gore or Nonstop Violence replenish 10% toughness per Bull Rush hit. Feel way more applicable as far as like dealing damage eliminating enemies or staying alive during a fight this feels like very circumstantial maybe if there's a mission where you need to like travel from point a to point b this would make sense that's all the skills so where does the ogarian skullbreaker sort of fit into the team composition clearly and obviously they are sort of like the tank they have a lot of stuff that synergizes with either like the uh, increasing their toughness value or getting more of it generated or having just bonus melee reduction da or bonus damage reduction things like that right so they're tanky very durable that's also sort of coupled with just like damage and you can sort of blend between like uh either doing more single target damage with like payback time i think we'll have a clear and obvious value during boss fights where you got one enemy who hits you and then that's the only enemy in the arena so the only person you hit back is going to be the person who will deserve some payback time things like that right or you got heavyweight or blood and thunder where it seems like you sort of like it's survivability plus you choose between single target damage or or crowd control and that's about and that's about it but his base kit interestingly enough he's sort of the inverse of the psyker the psyker has what well, for the most part in their brain in their brain explosion ability lots of tools for dealing with uh High health targets, single target burst damage, but the psyker then lacks the survivability, the mobility, and though the you know the even though the sword is quite good as far as dealing with the sword event, they don't really have any skills that really synergize with crowd control. The Ogarian is the opposite; they have lots of survivability, some mobility, as well as tools for dealing with crowd control but are a little bit more limited on their ability to do burst damage, but they still have a kit that caters to that idea. The shotgun that they start off with, as well as going to be, you know, find more of and upgrade and stuff like that, actually has really high burst damage potential, but it's limited in range and limited in magazine size. They also have the grenade, which uh, is like basically a brain burst in a, in a can. Um, but again, they're limited by, they only have one of them. And it sort of makes like having a veteran shooter with the uh, ability to restore grenades to allies looking really good. So in that sense, they're inversed. Bulgarian has the health with a limited set of tools for dealing with single target damage, whereas the uh, Psyker limited health, but a lot more access to tools as far as dealing with single target health damage. Which is kind of cool, but the Bulgarian Skullbreaker then also sort of doubles down on like just being extra tanky, extra durable, uh, another way that the uh, Ogarian Skullbreaker can deal with uh, the elites and some of the higher health enemies is like is actually the stagger. Uh, if somebody gets pinned by a mutant, you can actually run up and smack them with your club and stagger them off of them, or charge into them and stagger them off of them and things like that. And so, the tools for the ogre as far as dealing with single target health, high health enemies, a little more limited as far as like range and potential quantity of them all. Of them all but still has that kit that clearly 
caters to that particular particular type of enemy, but still has actually very strong tools as far as dealing with mob events as well. So we're kind of diverse in that. It's just like the ogre is like, like I said before, health, and you sort of, and crowd control, as well as single target damage, and then you can sort of spec into being a little bit better at one or the other. Whereas the psyker is pretty pretty all in as far as just single target damage. So kind of interesting. Uh, some solo clutch potential here with all the durability and the ability to revive and not get staggered or like hard as nails. Clear and obvious tools for, for that sort of stuff here. But clearly it's like, is the tank, is the meat wall, it's the shield. And uh, I've actually had a lot of fun playing this character. I think the only character I already talked about that I, that I, that I don't think is necessarily bad, I just found it a little boring, was the veteran sharpshooter. So it's stuff to look forward to, stuff to sort of pay attention to, see what's going on. Oh, the other thing too about the Ogre is that they have significantly more stamina than all the other classes, allowing them to shove and block uh, more during big fights, making them more tanky, giving them more crowd control. But also that, with the sprint jump tech, where when you sprint jump, when you're, you're hang time, you maintain your sprint momentum, but while you're in the air, you don't drain stamina allowing you to basically sprint over a greater distance with a single bar of stamina. It's it's insane with the ogre with the Ogarian. You can you can you can sprint so far with this huge stamina bar, it's actually quite funny. That the, the Ogarian is actually like the most mobile of all the classes because of the sprint jump tech that you can do with this large stamina bar. All of the classes can do it, but they have significantly less stamina. So, um, the Ogarian can sprint the furthest compared to, to everybody else. So, Ogarian, you want to smash things, have lots of health, save your teammates because you can just, who are dead because they're squishy and you're not. Uh, check this guy out. A lot of fun. A little limited on the shotgun. At least, uh, you know, keep in mind, there's future weapons that we're going to find and things like that as well. So, a lot to, a lot to look forward here. A little teaser, a sneak peek on all the classes for all of you out there who are looking at the game, checking it out, things like that. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll have a, I'll have a, a general review uh, coming out in the near future here after the beta is over and get as much playtime in as possible. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Any thoughts, ideas, concerns, problems, your experience with the Ogarian Skull Breaker? Anything I missed? Let me know. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the future.